After the death of Jesus, Mary takes upon herself the role of being the comforter of the apostles. She becomes their mother, joining them in prayer and through the event of Pentecost. She becomes the mother of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, and my dear children, today is the last day of our Novena service. And as we take part in this Eucharist, let us continue to thank God for the gift of our Blessed Mother to each one of us. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm will be, How good is the Lord? Kindly listen to the tune. extol you my God and King and bless your name forever and ever I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever the Lord is kind and full of compassion slow to anger abounding in mercy how good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. How good is the Lord to all. all your work shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. rise for the gospel. chose you from the world that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide says the Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. the Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord in those days jesus went out to the mountain to pray and all night he continued in prayer to god and when day came he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named Apostles, Simon whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip 
and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Simon who was called the Zealot and Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their dis diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured and all the crowd sought to touch him for power came out of him and healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children, my dear youngsters, and my dear people, do you know what is the theme of today's Novena service? It is the last day of our Novena service. Do you know what is the theme? Anybody can answer this. Bevin, what is the theme of today's Novena service? Here, Archana. Not Mary in the word of God, that is an overarching theme, no? But the main or specific theme is Mary at Pentecost. Mary at Pentecost. So today we will learn something more about this theme, Mary at Pentecost. Now tell me, after the death of Jesus, what, what must have been the situation of his apostles after the death of Jesus? What must have been his situation? What generally happens when we lose somebody who is close to us or dear to us? What happens? How do we feel? You all have not lost anybody and not felt anything like that? Very good. We feel sad. What other feeling goes on within us besides sadness? We feel very low, no? We feel very low, we feel disheartened, we feel that the world has come to an end for us, no? Especially when we lose somebody who is very near and dear to us. So that was exactly the situation of the apostles after the death of Jesus. Because he was somebody who was closest and dearest to them. So imagine their state of their, the state of their mind and heart after they lost him. You know? They were disheartened, they were feeling low, they were feeling discouraged. And in these moments when we are going through this feeling of discouragement or disheartenment or feeling low, don't we need somebody to lift us up. We need, no? Someone who can, you know, give us that courage, who can comfort us, who can console us. So, since we are human beings, we need somebody's support or consolation and comfort. Now, for the apostles, who was that one person, you think? Who was that one person? Mother Mary, no? She was that one person to give them that comfort and Consolation. So when you read uh, the first, if you have heard that first reading of today, you see that Mary was constantly with the apostles. She was always standing by them. She was always besides them. And why was she present with them? And to, why was Mother Mary present with the apostles? Hmm. Yes. So more than to support, yeah, that is the right word, no? To support them, to encourage them, no? They were discouraged. So to encourage them, to support them, and most importantly, to remind them all that 
Jesus had told them, you know, when our mind is disturbed, no, we forget everything. So similarly, the apostles were, you know, in a disturbed state of mind. So to comfort them, to pacify them, to encourage them, to support them, Mother Mary was there and to, most importantly, remind them of the words of Jesus. And not just the words, but also, also what do you think? Besides the word, what did Jesus do? He made certain promises, no? He made certain promises. And what was one of the important promises that Jesus made to his apostles before going to his Father in heaven? What promise he made? Can anybody tell me? Derek, what promise Jesus had made before going to the Father? Yes, that is one promise, that he will come again in the same way just as he has gone up, he will once again come down, no? Kevin, what promise Jesus made to the apostles? That is the right answer, one, one of the promises, that he will come back again. What was the other promise? What was another promise? The gift of the Holy Spirit. No? He said, stay in Jerusalem because you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that was another important promise that Jesus made to his apostles. So we are told that Mother Mary told, his, told the apostles to trust in the promises of Jesus, to have trust in the promises of Jesus. And therefore, on Pentecost day, on Pentecost day, Mother Mary was present with the apostles and they were praying hard. Praying for what? Why were they praying hard? For what reason were they praying? I don't know the name of this boy. Rex. Ah, Rex, why were they praying? Why were they praying? For the gift of the Holy Spirit. No? They were praying for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? Were their prayer answered? Was their prayer answered? Yes. No? Their prayer was answered because they were praying sincerely. They were praying sincerely and earnestly. Their prayer was answered and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now let me ask you one uh, important, not just important, but maybe this, you may not know this. Why did they gather only on the day of Pentecost for this gift of the Holy Spirit? Why only on that day of Pentecost? Why not any other day? Why not any other day? I don't know your name, I forgot. Sorry? Eleanor, huh? Eleanor, why had they assembled only on the day of Pentecost? Agassi, why did they gather only on the day of Pentecost? Elvis is scared now only. See, Pentecost was a day when they remembered the Ten Commandments that were given by God to Moses, no? See, there are certain days when we remember something, no? Like on our birthday, we remember the day we were born. So on Pentecost day, it was a feast on which they remembered the time when God had given ten commandments to Moses and Moses had passed them down to the people. So it was a day of remembrance of that particular event, giving of the ten commandments. So in olden times, God gave ten commandments. And now what did he do on Pentecost day? This young lady here, what did God do on Pentecost day? He gave them something else. What was that something else? You did the reading, you don't know? 
gift of the holy spirit no on this pentecost now when they were gathered he gave them gift of the holy spirit okay now since we are talking so much about the holy spirit and you all are confirmation students also no bevin your confirmation student okay so now what important lesson do you learn from this theme of pentecost we should wonderful no that's a very nice answer if you pray sincerely and honestly your prayer will be answered no so to receive the gift if you really want the gift of the holy spirit then you must pray sincerely and honestly if you truly want to receive the gift of the holy spirit you must pray like how mother mary and the apostles prayed so that is one of the important lessons another important lesson is to trust in the promises of jesus you know jesus has made so many promises in the bible ask and you will receive knock and it will be open to you search and you will find so don't think those promises are empty no sometimes two people they make promises to each other but they are empty promises i will do this and i will do that i will do that no but all those empty promises are empty but that is not the case with jesus jesus is true to each and every promise of his no whether it is small or big so now let's close our eyes for a while and ask the grace of the eucharistic lord to help us to trust in each and every promise of his and at the same time to pray earnestly and seriously for the gift of the holy spirit in our lives so that we may live holy lives let us rise and place before god our prayers and petitions the spirit that came down on mary and the apostles at pentecost is the same spirit that prompts us to call upon god our father in prayer saying lord hear our prayer together lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for the pope bishops clergy and religious that the decisions they make to govern the folk untrusted to them may always be guided by the motherly advice of mary and inspired by the holy spirit we pray lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for those in positions of authority that they may always be open to the spirit of god to direct and influence their decision making we pray lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. for all of us who have participated in this novena that following the example of our blessed mother we may always take recourse to and trust in the word of god through the inspiration and grace of the holy spirit we pray lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for our personal and community needs we pray lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer heavenly father you give us mary as a model of true discipleship and a believer in the promises you make to us in the scriptures may we like her always be able to stand firm on your word and live a life pleasing to you we make this prayer to christ our lord amen, amen. We offer you, O Lord divine, 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty, Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith and his coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us make a spiritual communion with the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Navina prayer to Our Lady of the Mount. O Mary, Mother of Jesus, we honor you and thank you for the countless blessings we have received through your intercession with your divine Son, Jesus. As you are the Queen and Mother of Mumbai, we humbly implore you to keep our city safe from all dangers, troubles, calamities, and all evil. Let there be peace, goodwill, and understanding among all communities in India and the whole world. Keep our families united in mutual love and obtain for us the following favor. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayer we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking an efficacious control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine will be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated for a while. I am happy to announce that we have received an overwhelming response as far as the other competitions were concerned, like the mascot, the drawing, the singing, and I'm here to remind you of the last competition of Armenian Night that is composing a poem and recording a video of the same by reciting it. So tomorrow is the last day for that. So once you, have, once you are ready with your video, kindly send us your entries on our WhatsApp number 8169875316 together with your name and zone latest by tomorrow 6 p.m. and the first three entries will get nice prizes so please do participate kindly rise for the final prayer the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen go forth the mass is ended thanks be to god Hey, Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, guide of the Star of the sea
of the wind, star of the sea, pray for the 